the Washington State Cougars, led by another new head coach, Jake Dickert. Now, he led this team to a 4-3 and three record down the stretch before losing the bowl game. Nick Rolovich, of course, was fired for not getting the jab. And, of course, in Washington, it's, uh, it's just a little bit different up there. Just a little bit different. So, uh, post-game win expectancy for them last year, uh, they were 7-5 they were and five heading into the bowl game. Their post-game win expectancy was 5.5 wins roundabout. So, either 5-7 and seven or 6-6. Six and six. So, they actually outperformed. And a big part of that was the fact that their turnover margin was number 9 in the country. Uh, they were able to get, like they garnered a lot of takeaways. Just a ton of takeaways last year. This year is going to be a little different. Like they they were average last year on pretty much everything. PPA margin number sixty six, right? And when you look at these numbers, sixty six on offensive PPA per drive, number sixty two on defensive PPA per drive. Uh, looking at the offense to start off, right? You're going to lose Max Borgie. That hurts. You're going to lose uh, the right tackle Abraham Lucas, uh, the wide receiver Travell Harris, etc. I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff. Uh, which I just realized I put Travell Harris on there twice. Uh, you lose Jaden Delara as well. Now, that one may not sting as much because you are bringing in a new OC along with a new quarterback. The new OC is Eric Morris. He was the former head coach at Incarnate Word, and he was Cam Ward or Cameron Ward, whichever one you'd like to call him, the new quarterback. He was his head coach at FCS uh, or at the, the FCS level. They were the number four FCS scoring offense, and they like to fling it around the ball yard. Um, he, Cam Ward is the future for this offense. And this is somewhat similar to what Western Kentucky did with Houston Baptist last year, where they took Houston Baptist's offensive coordinator along with the uh, the quarterback and like several wide receivers, et cetera. Like they just brought like a whole offense over. They're not bringing an entire offense. I think there's one other incarnate word player that is transferring with these guys. But for the most part, this is bringing in a play caller and a quarterback and putting him with all the pieces that you already have, right? And they've got some guys, but, eh, you know, Stribling should be awesome, I think. Uh, they've only got four starters back on offense, though. So you you got to kind of make this thing gel very quickly. Uh, the running back, Nakia Watson, he played in the bowl game. I think it was 17 carries for like 62 yards, something like that. He was the only running back, or is the only running back on the roster with any kind of snaps from last season. Uh, this is going to be a completely different offense. Like, they are losing a lot of offensive linemen. They are losing playmakers. They, like, this is going to be crazy. Crazy to see, but everybody is hyped about Cameron Ward. So, eh, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, returning production for this team is number 99. They're returning 56% of their production, and it's number 112 on offense. That's going to get tricky. That's going to get tricky. The defense was actually pretty good last year, number 62 in PPA per drive. Um Jake Dickert was the defensive coordinator. Like it's so, it would make sense that the defense was pretty good if they were going to hire him to be uh, the head coach after hiring him as the interim. But uh, but number fifty six in returning production on defense, sixty five percent there. Uh, but their roster strength is much higher on offense, number sixty five than it is on defense, number eighty one. Uh, they went from thirty eight and a half points per game in twenty twenty to only twenty four point two points per game in twenty twenty one. Thanks in part to Dickert there, who is now the head coach. Even with 65% returning, like this, the stock is pointing down for the defense, I would imagine. I don't know that you're going to be able to generate that many turnovers uh, this coming season. Number 62 in PPA per drive last season, which I talked about, uh, th they couldn't stop the run, though. I mean, they were number one, uh, 105 in uh, defensive rushing success rate allowed and number 100 in yards per rush allowed. Like, and they were plus 11 in, in turnover margin. Like, I think that kind of tricked fans into believing that the defense was better than they were. And don't get me wrong, there is an art to getting turnovers. You can be aggressive and find a way to force more turnovers. It's There's still a bit of luck involved with that. So this one's tricky. This one's certainly tricky. Uh, keys to the season, uh, nothing matters other than the quarterback, Cam Ward. If he clicks with the wide receivers and the offensive line protects, like, this offense can go to the moon. They absolutely can. Defense likely still won't be stopping a whole lot. Turnover's probably going to regress. Uh, watch out for the linebacker, uh, Henley, from Nevada. I think he could play really well for that defense, especially in Dickert's uh, scheme. The new head coach, Jake Dickert, still has a lot to prove here. Uh, what he did down the stretch was pretty impressive. You know, a 4-3 and three down the stretch, made it to a bowl game, destroyed Washington. 
I think you're going to see a little bit of revenge here. There's not a lot of experience that's coming back on the field. He, How much time has he had to work with them, et cetera? This could be interesting. Um, I've got... I've got a record prediction different here than what I had uh, over there. And uh, you guys can't see that anyway. So um, I had six and six down here. I I think I moved it over to five and seven. I mean, we'll see. It is hard. This is a very difficult job in Pullman. Um, And while I could see them winning a sixth game, I think think it's going to be very tricky. Projected the SP plus record here. Is five and a half and six, five and a half wins and six and a half losses. So anywhere from five and seven to six and six, like I think they're going to be the the lower side of that. I think five and seven. I mean, it's a pretty tricky schedule. You got to go to Wisconsin. I think the win or a game at Colorado State or against Colorado State that's going to be a win, especially early in the season as they're trying to get acclimated into a new scheme for Jane Overell. But um, but yeah, I mean you got Oregon and Cal early. You got at USC at Oregon State. Utah after a bye, you play at Stanford. Even the wins that could be easy wins, uh, quote-unquote easy, even those could be difficult because you've got them on the road, right? So this is uh, this is going to be a tricky one, uh, but I've got them at 5-7, and seven, and, you know, we'll, we'll hope for the best. How's that? So I think, I think everybody in the country, just a little bit, other than maybe Washington fans, pull for the Cougs a little bit. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.